In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a Helm chart and push it to Kubernetes. The application that we're going to be deploying is the one that we've been working on in this series the whole time. It's a basic REST API that reaches out to the YouTube API and returns subscriber stats. This application is very simple, but even simple applications require just a little bit of planning to figure out how they're going to work in Kubernetes. So let's talk about the characteristics of this app. First off, the application exposes port 10101 on the container. It runs as user 1001. It needs to have the path slash YouTube slash channel slash stats routed to the application so it can return its result. The application requires two environment variables, one of them being the YouTube API key and the other one, the YouTube channel ID. I think this application should probably support auto scaling. Um, not that it's gonna get a ton of traffic, but let's just do it for demo purposes. This application is stateless, so we can have as many replicas as we want without having to worry about any other problems. It doesn't need any additional storage volumes, and it doesn't require a special service account to give it any kind of additional permissions in Kubernetes. So based on what we know about this application now, we can go ahead and start thinking about the Kubernetes objects that would be needed. Now, obviously Kubernetes is a large topic and there's a ton of different objects that you can use and I could go into all of them. But for this example, I'm just gonna briefly go through the objects that we are going to need. For this application, we're gonna need a deployment object, a service object, a horizontal pod autoscaler object, a secrets object, and an ingress. Uh, with those items, we should be able to get this thing up and running. So let's go ahead and go over to the computer and we'll jump into Helm and see how this all works. Okay, so over at the computer, I have the Helm website opened up here. And obviously, just in case you don't know what Helm is, uh, Helm describes itself as the package manager for Kubernetes. At its core, it's really mostly a templating uh, tool. So you define the Kubernetes objects that you need and you can use templating language to populate little bits of those objects with information that is configurable. So when we get into building the chart, we will cover all of those things and the items that are configurable and the things that are hard coded. All right, so now here we are in the uh, source code. And if you don't have this project already cloned, uh, you can go to my GitHub and clone it and uh, it's already a running example you don't really have to be following this example in uh, in order to get anything out of this video but if you do want to follow along it is very helpful so first thing we want to do is make sure that we have helm installed uh, since i'm on a mac i'm going to go ahead and just run it and install it with homebrew and obviously i already have it installed so it's just going to go ahead and tell me that it's already installed which is fine okay now the first thing you want to do when you're creating a helm chart is you can have helm generate a whole bunch of stuff for you which is super helpful so we're going to create a directory in here called charts um, and that will be useful later when we automate pushing this up to uh, up to github for uh, for distribution and now that we have the charts directory we're going to change into that and then the next thing to do is to have helm generate uh, the boilerplate for the chart and i'm going to call my chart you YouTube stats chart and we're going to use the helm create command here and now if we go into the directory you'll see here that it's generated a bunch of stuff for us and i think probably the most important part of this is that it has generated almost everything we need in order to launch this first off there's a deployment here um, we'll get into the details on this there's the hor horizontal pod autoscaler that we talked about there's an ingress template there is the service which is required to point the traffic to the pods and then there is even a service account YAML, which we're not going to need, but it's here just in case you need it. And then finally, there is the charts.yaml, which is the information about this chart, and the values.yaml, where you put your default values if someone were to install this chart. Note that you don't put your actual values in here, especially things like secrets, that I will show you how to do in a later step. So the great news about using the Helm create command is that it literally makes most of the chart for you. And for most basic uh, examples, it's really all you're going to need. For this example here, since I'm trying to get through this quickly and not make a 45 minute video, I'm going to rely on the boilerplate examples that it's already created. And we're just gonna populate values.yaml and make a couple tweaks to deployment and then also introduce a secrets object, which is what's going to hold the couple environment variables that are necessary to run this application. Okay, so here in deployment.yaml, um, we don't have to change a whole lot. We're gonna leave most of this alone. Uh, really, the only thing we have to do is add a reference to a, to a so it can get the environment variables that are necessary to, to run the application. So in order to do that, uh, inside of the container section, which defines each of the containers that's running inside the pod, we want this container to get its environment variables from a secret. Now we haven't defined the secret yet, but we'll go ahead and define the code here. So we're gonna use env 
from. And we're going to say that it's getting environment from a secret reference. And the secret ref that it's using is going to be the name of the secrets object that we're going to create, which in this case is going to use a template. We're going to include the full name of the chart and then dash secrets. And that's going to be the name of the secret. Again, this is a templating system. It's going to use that include there to go look into helpers.tpl and get the full name, which is defined here. Uh, there's a bunch of logic wrapped around this, but essentially it makes a safe full name of the chart uh, with, with dashes and it also trims it if it gets too long. Okay, so this is the only change that we have to make to deployment.yaml. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to, inside of templates, we're gonna create a new file and this file is gonna call, be called secrets. And just because it's called secrets.yaml doesn't mean that you can put secrets in it. These things are still wide open text. So all we're really doing is creating a template. And when we run the Helm command to install the application, it's going to pull the secrets from variables and create a secrets object in Kubernetes. So over here in secrets.yaml, uh, we're just going to define a uh, basic secrets object. This is where the name comes in. We're going to be using the exact same name that we defined in deployment.yaml. And in the data section, we're going to be defining the two environment variables that we need for our application to run. There's the YouTube API key and the YouTube channel ID. Now the value of these, uh, these two variables are going to be populated by the values that get passed into the chart when it is deployed. So I want to use the templating system here to pull that value in and base64 encode it because that's required for secrets in Kubernetes. So what this line is doing is it's referencing inside the values a sub-object called YouTube stat settings, which we haven't defined yet and we will in a minute. And then inside of there, a, uh, a key called YouTube API key. It'll get the value of that. And then if it doesn't exist, it's going to create a default of uh, an empty string. And, and then it's going to base64 encode that value, and that's what's going to end up in the final secrets object that gets passed on to the Kubernetes cluster. All right, and that's all it is for the secrets object. We can go ahead and close out of this, and the deployment, and the helpers. So now we're gonna go over the values.yaml file. And like I mentioned before, uh, the values.yaml file, while it is called values, it is not the place where you should be putting your, your specific configuration about your application. Uh, when creating a Helm chart, the purpose of the chart is that you can distribute it and other people can install the application. And the values are the things that can be changed by the person when they're installing the application for themselves. So what we're going to do in values.yaml is we're going to define some, I'll call them sane defaults. And then when the user, when another user installs it, or when we install it in just a minute from now, we'll be able to define our override values uh, from a different file altogether, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so over here in values.yaml, you can see that it's generated a lot of uh, just automatic default information and filled in some filled in some blanks. So we're gonna have to make some modifications to this. Uh, first off, we can go ahead and leave replica count at one. Uh, the image is not correct because we want it to run our YouTube stats image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab the repository that we defined earlier in the series. And like I said before, if you want to go check out the series, uh, I will put a card at the top and a link in the description. Uh, we're going to set pull policy to if not present. That's normal for Kubernetes. Essentially, if it doesn't exist, it's going to pull it. And we're going to leave the tag as an empty string. And we'll get to that in a little bit here. Um, image pull secrets, we're going to leave alone since this is a public repo. We don't need a name override or a full name override. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to go ahead and delete those lines. Service account, we don't need a service account, so we're just gonna set this to false. We don't need any pod annotations. Okay, so now for the pod security context and the security context. Uh, like I mentioned before, and this is why the planning is important, this application runs as user 1001. Um, again, we created that earlier. We made it so the container doesn't run as the root user. So we need to tell Kubernetes that it is running as this user. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these empty braces. And then we're going to add this FS group and it's going to be 1001. And then we're going to do the same thing down here for the security context. We're going to modify this so it works correctly too. So, so we're setting this for the security context to run as user 1001, run as group 1001, and run as non-root true. Uh, that makes sure that it runs it the right way that the container expects. Okay, now down to the ingress. This is where we define the route that gets routed to this specific service. 
Um, in our case, since we're only installing one, I'm going to go ahead and leave the path at slash, but you can put a more specific path in there as you want. So we're going to set this enable to true. We don't need a class name or any annotations, but um, if you had a different type of ingress or something, you may need to add this type of stuff. And that's the reason that these are set in values.yaml and not hard coded into the templates themselves. We're going to set our host to localhost because I'm going to be running this locally. And we're going to tell it that for this application, the path, uh, the root path essentially is going to route to this service. Uh, we're not going to worry about uh, TLS at this point because it's only an example. Now, like it says here, um, it usually recommends that you don't set any resources, but I am going to set resources. And the reason for that is because we're going to be doing a setup with auto scaling. When you're setting up auto scaling on an application, it's absolutely critical that you have some sort of resources to find. If you don't define the resources, then the auto scaler just won't work because it won't know how to react to the instructions that you gave it. So we're just going to go ahead and rip this all out and uh, paste in the limits and the requests. So I've set the limits on this to uh, 150 milli CPU and 128 megabytes of, uh, of memory. And then I set the request to 100 milli CPU. I did not put in a memory request because this is going to be running locally and you can consume all of the memory in your little local cluster and then nothing will work. So we're just going to leave it like this. All right. And then finally, we're going to enable the auto scaling and we're going to set max replicas to five because 100 is insane. And uh, target CPU utilization percentage means when this service hits 80 or higher percent of its CPU usage, it will scale another copy. All right, and finally, we're going to go ahead and just do a quick review of chart.yaml so you can see what it is. Uh, API version uh, v2 means that we are running on, uh, believe it or not, Helm v3. The name of the chart is YouTube stats chart, and that was populated when I ran the create command. Um, and then we'll put a description so anybody else can see it when they pull this down. All right, got that done. So the version number and the API version, um, in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and leave these as the same. This will come in handy later when we automate the process of packaging this chart and pushing it up to a, uh, a Helm chart repo. Um, what we'll be able to do is tag the application and have the version number coincide. So this is really just a hard-coded default and we can override these in the packaging option. All right, so there's one last step before we install this. Uh, like I mentioned before, the values.yaml file is a set of instructions, but does not actually contain the exact information that we need in order to run this application. Um, a few things are missing. If we go back to secrets, you'll see here that it references values.youtube.stats.settings and the YouTube API key and the YouTube channel ID. We need to account for those in values.yaml. So we'll go ahead and put these in the YouTube stat settings and then the YT API key and the YT channel ID. Here in values, I'm going to leave this blank. It's very important that you leave this blank here or otherwise you're essentially sharing your YouTube API key with the world. Okay, now that we have this defined, the next thing to do is to define the overrides that we need to have in our application in order to make this work. We're obviously gonna have to populate the YouTube API key and the YouTube channel ID. But also we're going to have to populate the tag. I'm going to want to pull the version, the latest version of the application. So I've already created this file and I've set it aside. It's not in the repo. It's going to be in another place that you keep safe. So I've created a folder outside of my project and I've created a new file called myvalues.yaml. And we'll go ahead and open that up. I'll have to blur out the API key. But you can see here that it's essentially the same thing as values.yaml, but just the information that you want to override is set here. So YouTube stat settings and the API key and the channel are set. And then the image, we're gonna set the tag to latest. That's really all there is to it. Okay, so believe it or not, that's all there is to it. Um, we just created the Helm chart, and now what we're going to do is go ahead and install it. Since we're going to be running this locally, there's really no need to package it and push it up to a Helm repo. We're just going to run it from the machine. Um, along with that, it's going to be required that you have a local Kubernetes cluster installed on your machine, or otherwise this won't install. If you don't know how to set up a local Kubernetes cluster or you would like a script that'll do it for you, I do have one available on my website. I'll put a link in the description below. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. All right, so back to the application. Now that we have this working, all we really need to do is just run the install command. Just a real quick review of the anatomy of this, this command. Uh, this is gonna be helm install and then YouTube stats is the name that you are naming your installation. So you can call it whatever you want. I'm calling it YouTube stats. Um, and then dash F is the flag that tells that tells Helm, this is where I want you to pull an additional values file. So my additional values file is on my desktop and I put it in a folder. And again, it's the myvalues.yaml that we just reviewed. Finally, and also very important, the dot at the end means something. It means that you want to install from this folder. 
And in this case, I'm in the charts directory, so that's wrong. We want to actually install it from the YouTube stats chart directory. So we're going to just change this real quick. There we go. Now, this is telling us everything that, that this is telling Helm everything it needs to know to install this application. So let's go ahead and run it. All right, that was super quick. It went ahead and installed it. Now let's pull up what's going on in the in the cluster. You see here if I look at the pods that it is in the process of installing it. Um, currently, it is the one that's highlighted in orange. It says that it's running, but it's not ready. So we're just waiting a second for it to finish and for it to be ready. All right, so it looks like this is crash looping and I think I know why. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Back over here in deployment.yaml, I have a liveness probe and a readiness probe. And what this is doing is it's checking the application to see if it is up and running. And if it's not, if it doesn't return a 200 response, then it just simply will restart the service after so much time. So let's fix this. We know that uh, that the YouTube stats uh, API is responsive on uh, the path YouTube channel stats, right? That's where it was. So let's just grab this and say that the liveness probe is going to be slash YouTube channel stats and slash YouTube slash channel slash stats on the HTTP port. So we're gonna save that. And now instead of running an install, we're gonna run an upgrade. Okay, so it's been upgraded. Now let's see if it goes healthy. Oh, still having the same problem. So what else are we missing? Back to deployments.yaml, uh, right here, port 80. We know that this application runs on 10101. So save it one more time and try it again. Ah, there it goes. Now we're looking better. Everything seems to be running. So now if I go back and refresh the page, there we go. Everything's working. All right, so there you have it. That's how to make a Helm chart from scratch and uh, set it up to installing Kubernetes. Like I said, everything is, is all in the planning. Got to make sure that you know everything about your application or otherwise, really, the rest of this stuff just doesn't work. So thanks for stopping by.